Uh, hello, Robert. I think we're on, right? <laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome to Cambridge Inside Out, the most uh, non-exciting TV on TV. <laughs> That's so, true. <laughs> I'm Robert Winters. <laughs> I'm Judy Nathans. The and only today, time I wear lipstick. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll forego you, you that. You can pass on the myself. lipstick. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so anyway, today's July 7th, 2020. Yes. Oh, we're sort of, um, you know, still carrying on in the in the midst of uh, Corona. Post pandemic. Uh, well, pre. No, we're actually in the middle of a pandemic. We're not post or pre, are we? No, no, but but definitely there are some things to be said about that in terms definitely. of just where yes. we stand in terms of how Cambridge is doing, yes. how Massachusetts is doing, yep. relative to the rest of the yep. country. Um, but I thought maybe what we should do is just make uh, make mentioned um, right up front about mm -hmm. a very, very significant passing yes. uh, obituary in today's Boston Globe for yeah. former mayor, Barbara Ackerman. Yes. Um, uh, of particular relevance for a TV show called Cambridge Inside Out because Barbara Ackerman was one of the regulars uh, when Glenn Kucher did the show for uh, quite a few years. Barbara was on there pretty much every week and mm -hmm. you know, one of the most solid people of all. Um, so maybe I'll just try to take a quick look over here at the. Um, yeah, that's how I just found out about it. Yeah. Over at today's Boston Globe, you know, yes. Brian Markhart, who writes really wonderful obituaries. So it I was just two hours ago. So it really was just posted. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for those who, who don't know, I mean, Barbara Ackerman was first, she actually served three terms on the Cambridge School Committee. Before first, she was on the city yep, council. First elected oh, in 1961, then 63 <clears> and 65. Uh, she served five terms on the city council, elected in 1967, 69, 71, 73, and 75. And she's actually one of the, uh, you know, there's a, a story about, you know, kind of a cautionary tale for those who understand uh, proportional <laughs> representation elections in that in 1977, she she wanted more company on the city council of the like-minded people. So she mm. actually encouraged people to vote for Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen Prusser, who then not only won, but actually edged out and, and led to the defeat of Robert Ackerman. That, it's one of those that's unfortunate realities of proportional representation uh -huh. elections is that uh, you can, um, you know, basically some of the, the people who are so much very similar to yourself can often be end up being your greatest competitor that certainly wasn't her intention but that that's how it did happened. they did they serve did they kind of come from the same area was that part of the problem you know or? i don't don't remember in terms of addresses i uh -huh. do remember i think barbara lived on i think foster street if i'm not mistaken I, okay I don't remember. it's been a while yeah um she um she was a, a little you know, not in her best self for the last several years, was living out in uh, Lenox. You're talking about now, not then, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, oh, sure. yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. the last time I saw her, it was over by the Longfellow uh, Park, walking mm. her dog, you know, so, um, wow. yeah. So yeah. anyway, you know, hail and farewell to Barbara Ackerman. Yeah, yeah, the, I'm glad you, you put that, yeah, people can find that it's, uh, yeah, so, was she the only woman on the council for a while? Uh, I think the first woman elected to the Cambridge City Council in the Plan E era was Pearl Wise. Oh, right. But I mean, yeah. at her time, was there another woman serving? Um, I, I don't maybe, remember when she first joined the council. Maybe not. That's why she encouraged this but woman. Certainly, she were, was counselor yeah. si simultaneously with Sandra Graham. Right. That's right. Um, that's true. Right. Yeah, we we figured I, that out. Yeah. I'd have to go look up. You know, I think I know where to look. It, that probably was the only two, because until really the last five, ten years, there hasn't been more than one or two women. Um, I think there were four in 1993. Really? Elected. 93. Catherine Tran, Afilu, Kathy Bourne. Oh, Kathy Kim Bourne, Russell, right. Oh, you're right. And, you're right. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe because they didn't, maybe they were like one term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. So anyway, that was something we hadn't planned to talk about, but I'm glad we caught it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's an incredibly significant yeah. thing for those. Who, and by the yes. way, one thing I should also mention. Oh, right, show the book, you know, right. I mean, it's mentioned in the other an author. Right. I mean, Barbara that. Ackerman was actually mayor uh, for the, uh, the 72-73. Yeah. Yeah, and wrote and this wonderful book. Is that still available? Afterwards. It's probably in yeah, the actually, library. Yeah. yeah, I picked it up on eBay, I think, or in, through Amazon. You can still. You can, but know, I'm sure nice the Cambridge book. Public probably. Library should have. You can copy. pick up it at the yeah. library, right? You know, and it's full of great stories, and uh, very you know, nice. Definitely would encourage uh, people. Okay. To take that. So, 
So oh, anyway, yeah. many things happening uh, these yeah. days uh, here in, in good old Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yes. We are, we are technically in the midst of the summer recess for our local Cambridge City Council. Except um, they've been busy. There was a meeting today that I it was kind a public, of watched. Public, yeah, safety. public safety. And, and then I, I guess I there's watched, something going on now, isn't there? Excited. I think there's an ordinance, ordinance committee. Meeting? Yeah. Or meeting, was, yeah, sort of it's the yeah. updated uh, bicycle this, safety right. ordinance. You know, we are kind of in a. I mean, I'll, I don't mind saying I'm. I'm a little more on the. Uh, I'm more of an evolutionist than a revolutionary, uh -huh. and so I'm always a little skeptical about some of the things that people are kind of pushing hard on. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I don't know. I, I think they're. I think they're getting across. You talking about like bicycles and stuff? That that's. Yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, we're I'm, there. We're I have there. to say that I'm. I've always been a fan of the kind of quiet street, shared street way yeah. of doing uh working yeah. the streets i've never been the biggest fan of separated bicycle facilities except in places where there's a clear need you know i actually prefer to share the streets for the most part because i think we shouldn't have too many fast streets we should have slower yeah. streets well it should uh, say slow streets because shared yeah. like you can walk in the street i think is crazy yeah i, I think it works best for the cyclists which is fine but I'm not going to go be dodging cyclists on Magazine Street. I, I've been walking on that. And I just, I walk on the sidewalk. It's you know, I don't, I don't know <laughs> that you're really going to see too many of them, though. No, I but mean, the whole point is that you're sharing it with everybody. But really, in reality, it's just, it's made it easier, I think, for um, cyclists, I think, above all. And cars, I think that, it, with I all think, the barriers, it's crazy. I, I'd say they're probably the chief beneficiaries. Yeah, yeah, cyclists. which is fine. You know, I still would like to see um, markings on the street, even if it's just an arrow. I would like to see that almost on every, or like share the share the road. You know, I, would, manage, I mean, you know? some people will argue this point, but yeah. I think actually the whole system would work better yeah. if it was just like you know zebra striped or some sort of really loud and clear markings in the That's street. A, exactly. Yeah. Right. I don't know that I like all these sort of uh, A-frame signs that are just sort of laid. I, I think that's kind of I think skelter. that's not going to last because it, it's almost like going through a maze. It's like I think it's. I mean, it, we're not. You know, nobody has officially said that these shared streets are going to be sort of the permanent. Right. They were, they were instituted, especially in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. They were instituted yeah. very much. Um, yeah. You know, with the COVID nineteen right. pandemic in mind. You know. Right. Um, I mean, I'm not 100% sure that I agree with the rational basis for yeah, it because I, I know there's plenty I don't, of space. I don't out think there, there I was think. such yeah. crowding. Yeah. I don't but, either. Um, but we're in a minority, Robert. Sorry. I, I know. I know. I know. Actually, I do have some images. I, so maybe yeah. what I'll do here is actually uh, okay. I'm going to switch back here temporarily to Shared Barbara. Shared screen. Uh, and um, and, and uh, I'm going to. You have to go to uh, your Not to go photo. here. I mean, I'm sort of having, a, I'm competing with the, um, mm -hmm. the controls here. So I'm going to sort of try and do this uh, appropriately here. Oops. Here we go. Materials. Here we go. go to ma here we go. Yeah. So, uh, down now. All right. yeah. And, and by the way, oh, that's, you, that's mine. <laughs> right. So I, you know, I kind of like, I think it's nice that yeah. we can put some photos up here. So yeah. that, you know, the sort of wonderful yeah. Charles down by the Charles river. Oh, and these beautiful and the, hydrangeas. They're so hydrangeas. Cool. I just where, love them. where were these taken by the way? The uh, they're around. I don't know. They're just I'm, all around, everyone's yeah. got them. Yeah. But here's okay, this, this is, is, this is, is this magazine or is this, uh, yeah, yeah this, this is magazine street. Yeah. You know? Right. And uh, I actually, I've, when I go for walks, I'll often go down here and just sort of do a little mm -hmm. kind of temperature yep. check of, of how these shoes sure. are yeah. doing. You know, I have one on Harvard Street, very close to where I am. Right. Uh, but I often will go walking down Magazine Street. And, uh, you know, and, you know, with the, this was when it was like with, in the opening days. Just started, right. You have started. Yeah, right. And you saw, you know, very prominent was the sort of the, the, um, the markers yeah um, but a lot of people are still driving uh and not quite clear i think more people are kind of figuring it out a bit now well they um, have that yellow sign if you notice in the up there yeah uh, i mean 10 yeah. miles is really you know i wish the whole speed limit around was 20 because 20 you're not going to kill anybody and people have said yeah. that even the cyclists and you know, i always go 20 everywhere 
I mean, I there's no reason to go more than that on these streets. I think it's kind of a, a Massachusetts no. tradition. Maybe it's a yeah. an American tradition, which is that whatever the speed limit says, you everybody go knows above. people are going to go somewhere. Yeah, above, so right? I guess ten is ten is I, like a bicycle I, goes more than ten. Yeah, my my brother, <laughs> my brother was a New York City cop, and he right. you know he did traffic for, uh, for quite a bit in both the Bronx. He did it in Queens and Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and it was a terminology that police officers would use if you were doing traffic duty, which was that yeah. you know, the phrase was, uh, oh, do you, oh, he works nine. You know what works nine means? Yeah. It means he's not going to stop you and give you grief unless you're going more than nine miles per hour. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And somebody was c considered a hard ass cop if they, if he worked five. Right. Because right? then they're really coming down too hard. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was first learning to drive, because I was kind of lit relatively late in the game, I yeah. I always sort of said, well, if I'm going to push it, I'll never push it more than five. Of course, you know, time sure. passes, we all push it a little but more. I, but I only do that on the highway. I really never do that yeah. in, in the city. But anyway, so well, let's say yeah. some more. By the way, uh, so, so in the opening right, so this, days, the, even the bus drivers hadn't yet figured wait, out. What's like, this, is this Magazine Magazine still? Street. So, But I thought the, they are changing this route. They did, and but the ah. bus, I think they didn't quite communicate to the bus drivers yeah. yet. So, so <laughs> right. sure enough, there was the sixty-four oh, bus barreling down Magazine right. Street. I hope there weren't too many potential passengers yeah. waiting for it over a block over. But you know, right. I, I think I haven't seen it barreling down Magazine. No, I think uh, I think they know now. They've yeah. kind of figured it out now, right? Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, meanwhile, and again, it's because I think this is kind yes. of a significant thing that's happening. Is this mess up? No, this is over in Inman Square, and oh. there's been a lot more changes since I took this. Oh, I see photo. the SNS. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think I so took is this that, photo. What, what is that? A raised uh, platform for, for um, tables? That uh, yeah, so so this is very close to the middle of, of Inman Square. This is like... Right. Um, well, I see the SNS and the... Over by the oh, Druid, right. or the, yeah, but near right. Springsfield Street. So Cafe, what they did yeah. was, um, mm -hmm. because the bus stop would be normally directly to the left. Oh, they, what and happened? Just, well, so what they did is they wanted to maintain the level all the way out to where the bus now stops, which is what I guess the activists would call a floating bus stop, which is just basically, a, that's just secret code for bus stops in the middle of traffic. Wait, I don't get it. Um, the bus so, was, the, the bus so used normally to the bus, in that lane? Yeah, we'd just pull right up to the curb here. Yeah, okay. Uh, and there's actually a little bus shelter. But right. now, so if now, people wait in the bus shelter, they have to get out to the bus, which is now like two lanes of traffic. Oh, so out. that's for the people walking for the bus. That's yeah, not so, for so restaurants they, or anything. Exactly. So they don't oh. have to step down. So they'll actually oh, walk right out to there. They did put oh, in a little goodness. drainage here to make sure it doesn't pull. Wow, that's a lot of work. Um, but, yeah. you know, so that's what these areas are. But further that, down, in the, yeah. a little bit into the distance, now uh -huh. that's all closed off. Really? Uh, and to serve the, the restaurants that are uh, more oh, or right. less from Prospect Street going yeah. up toward toward the center of Inman Square. Oh boy. Right. So wow. but this is just I just took this photo when they were actually laying down the asphalt I happened to be by there. Um, so it looks very different. Could, now. Couldn't you trip like walking off of that though? Uh, yes, you could, but the thing uh, they may have put, they, I think they've probably put they some more barriers. It or in, something. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this All is right. just when they were just laying it down. I see. You know? All and, right. And things have changed since now, then. Now this looks like Mass Ave, no? This is Mass Ave in right. Central Square. Right. Um, I actually haven't seen the restaurants yet doing their business. I haven't either, and I just walked there the other yesterday to the farmers yeah, market. Yeah, but I, I think they're they're in a position where they could just they could just do it now. I don't sure. think there's anything stopping them. Right. And, well, um, somebody's doing it. Who's this over? This is the Middle East, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it looks like it's in front is, of. Oh no, Rendezvous. It's not Rendezvous. Excuse me, Viale. I don't know what it right. is. Right. So this is looking down toward Brooklyn oh. Street. Right? Oh. So Wait, that, that that's whole... Brookline at the light? Uh, yes. Exactly. Oh, okay. So that's Brookline to Yeah, Pomeroy. so you're looking down toward Boston. You can okay. See so that is, that, that might be the Middle East over there. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so, so yeah. anyway, so this is being uh, set up for that. And yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen any action there yet, but, um, but it's kind of all re rock and roll and ready to go. Yeah. Um, and uh, looking the other way, you're back right. towards City Hall. Uh, these right. barriers, by the way, are actually filled with water. Oh, um, so, that, so they can't be moved that easily? Well, you know, right. So you can't really move them too easily. And, um, but they're right. heavy enough, they're not going to get toppled over all that easily. That, right. That makes sense. And they, and they do driving. provide some protection just in case some sure. wayward driver just goes careening and you don't want them so, to. All right. So, but what about the cyclists? Where do they go now? Well, what they did, you can see actually in this one here where the bike 
the bike lane that was uh, running down the center of this photo has now been simply repainted further right out. Yeah, but they so should get rid of those arrows. Still looks confusing. Um, well, hopefully they'll be like they'll tables. They'll be covered by things. tables. Yeah, yeah. And All they, right. may, they may smudge them yeah. out. But, but again, we also don't know for how long this is going to be in place. So well, Yeah, come to be cold. No one's going to be sitting outside. I right. mean, it's reality, yes. right? We live, yeah. we live oh, in yeah. Florida. Well, hopefully we'll get some nice, sunny, clear days this summer. Yeah, business we've gotten so. Are you kidding? The weather has actually been amazing since all this happened, I have to say. Well, we had a few really, really dismal days, lots and lots of big rains, and then yeah, the but last few very days. Very little. Yeah. Very little, though. Yeah. Overall, it's been amazing. Yeah. By the way, here's the same view, looking down That's Magazine, magazine. Street okay. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and, Life you know, it's kind yeah. of a long shot, so what you're really seeing is just, sure. you know, the, yeah. it's kind of scrunching together the blocks. Yeah. So, but what you really see is there's no people, for the most part, out there. I wouldn't be in the street. Are you kidding me? No, you'll see some cycles. There's no reason to be in the street. Yeah, I mean the thing is, the, is, the is, sidewalks is, are fine. In fact, some sidewalks on that street are pretty wide. Yeah, I just don't have a problem with. You know, you can go by somebody for two seconds. You're not going to catch it, especially if you're both wearing a mask yeah. and you're not talking. I'm, Come on. I mean, I'm sort of enamored yeah. of the idea, though, because it, not so much yeah. because I think it was a necessity, but there were all these sort of other uh, things that I've seen associated with it. For example, on Harvard right. Street. Yeah, Do you have uh, a picture see, of that. I will, yeah, but yeah. what's happening there on Harvard is um, yeah. people are leaving things out, like uh, take or leave, kind of like a, like it's like a free yard sale ha happening. You know, I see that are, anyway, though. They put it in front of Well, I think it's stepping up a little bit because oh. it's, people are sort of sauntering and it's becoming more of a draw. Well, because they don't feel like they can have a yard sale, so they're just putting stuff yeah, out. Maybe. But yeah, but there's just not that many people in there. You know, that's kind of the great fiction about this is that it was all yeah. motivated by this desperate need to no, get No, it's to really for, thing. I think it's, it's just more was, of this. It was never like really this. true. I know, I yeah. know. By the way, another where thing. Where is this, Robert? I'm okay. sorry. Where is this? <laughs> you know, I just... Every once in a while, you walk yeah. around Cambridge, you you know, which is supposed to be all gentrified and yeah. uh, and it's getting there. Yeah, the developers are taking over this, that, and the they other. They are. Thing. I see it all the time. But every once in a while, you'll go down some dead end street mm -hmm. and you'll find something you didn't know about. This is actually at the very, very um, uh, bitter end, western end of Green Street. It's called Green wait, Street. Oh, again. wait a minute. I think I wait. Which part of Green Street? Which end? Uh, after you cross Putnam and you just go uh, like a block down. I think I know. End. I think I know this house. It yeah. So a nice little fixer upper for you. I looked it up in the real estate. It yeah, turns what's out the Harvard story University. Here? Harvard University owns the properties. No way. On onto the right of it, behind yeah. it, squeezing all the way out to Mount Auburn. So why Street. can't they own this? They, because it's owned by somebody else who I'll, I wouldn't be surprised if they're just sort of holding out to sell it to Harvard. But, or I bet it's a family um, estate squabble or something. I bet. Um, it's, I think it's you know? more looks like a, a development company, but they just picked really? it up because they probably got it for a song. It's oh, amazing yeah. what the okay. real estate value of even a shack of it's falling oh, down is. Please. Land value, even I the know. building value, $200,000. You say, cr you crazy? I think yeah, I'm but that crazy. actually looks like a nice lot. Yeah, it's a pretty good lot. Yeah, yeah. But um, again, this is on July 5th on a Sunday afternoon, right? We should see yeah. throngs and throngs of people because don't you know, everybody needs to. But they, 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 they were the other day. I saw lots of people. But the, You do see a lot of people, but there were plenty yeah. of times when in oh, fact. Oh, I know. I know. I, I have not had a problem for months now going yeah. that way, the other way. Yeah. You're looking the other way back or sure. toward the Weeks footbridge. No, Again, pretty, pretty empty. You know, we have a lot lots of, of room. Space. I mean, yeah. it's kind of interesting because I think it's uh, one of the, re the last city council meeting, there was a proposal to oh, open I up heard. the Fresh Pond Golf Course because of oh, the that, supposed yeah. desperate need for people to find open space. Well, also people course. don't like the golf, they, where they're coming from. I mean, I can... Uh, it's a sport. I can understand that. And don't they make some money from people playing? There? They do. They do. I mean, it's not I, like I can see covered. it being used though at off hours. I think that would should be allowed. As long then, as it's they not would a, abuse it though, probably. You know, possibly so. Know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you actually look at the total acreage associated with it, it's not huge. It's sort of I just know. the, you know. But anyway, I just just wanted to point that no, out. Here's right. JFK Park. Oh yeah. Know, beautiful yeah. park over by the Kennedy School. 
I'm surprised there's nobody sitting out there. I don't know what time yeah. you were there, but well, there I were there were a few sitting. people, but not yeah. that many people. No, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I mean, this I, is really I, just meant to kind of yeah. point out how it's not like we have a lot of open space. No, this and, and this like, is this uh, is Harvard Street by my house, which Harvard again, Street. it's yeah. you know, once again, you're you're basically yeah. seeing um, uh -huh. uh, largely vacant. I mean, this was never a busy street anyway. Exactly. Is, so maybe that's why they did it. But yeah, it was. That's what Joe Barr said, the traffic director. It's like the only one that I, I kind of disagree with this magazine because it really is a route to Trader Joe's and other well, places, and I don't know. In, in, depending on where you go in Concord Ave is not necessarily the sole alternative to Garden <laughs> Street, which has been turned into a oh, street. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, you can too. you yeah. can use Concord to be sure, right? But, um, Yes. You know, but there are a lot of reasons why some people would also be coming down Garden Street. Honestly, I would almost inevitably, inevitably be using Garden Street rather than Concord. Yeah. Because Concord is sort of unpleasantly narrow, and uh, I always sort of enjoyed Garden Street as a But to get, if you were going to Trader Joe's from Mass Ave, you'd have to like go back and forth to get there because if you go down Pearl Street, you'd have to cross. I guess you can cross Magazine Street. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, anyway, I, I, I think it's a worthwhile experiment. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with yeah. if, if, let's hope, one day we're actually going to be, oh. uh, uh, you know, a little on the on the on the. We'll be seeing hopefully COVID nineteen in the rearview mirror. That's my uh, vaccine, baby. I don't know. Right, I know. I think we're going to be wearing masks for a long time. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But the thing is, it, it'll be kind of interesting to yeah. see whether people hold on very much strongly to these shared streets or whether yeah. some of them are Well, what do you think of the idea? Tarot By the way, by, what? I just want oh, to quickly yeah. say here before we come back to us oh, is that the oh, you have this numbers, update. yeah. Yeah, so the, as of today, the we have been seeing a relatively strong leveling off of coronavirus yes. positive tests in Cambridge. I think that's yeah. a, an optimistic uh, statement. Well, they closed one of the set and then now they have mobile sites, right? Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. There's always been a prediction that maybe come fall um, that we would actually start to see some uh, yeah. revival, sort of a second wave. I hope that's not But a true. lot of people don't want to be tested, even if they don't have, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I prefer not to be tested myself. Yeah. But the thing is, is, uh, yeah. uh, you know, if, uh, if people really do continue to sort of stick to the good discipline about it all, there's no reason why we necessarily have to have a second wave of this. Right, except but, that you're going to have people coming in from a lot of other places. But I think if you yourself can keep yourself, do all the right things, I think it's... Yeah, yeah. It's so I think, yeah. and honestly, Massachusetts is doing remarkably well compared to a lot of other yes. states. There's yes. a lot of misunderstanding when people look at, at the, the, the graphs and charts mm -hmm. about what's happening around the country yeah you know, i mean it's not like i live and breathe statistics but i can look at those graphs no, and what i yes see you do robert Come no on. not statistics All mathematics right, yeah. maybe okay. but not All statistics right. okay. so what, what you could see is you know we had our bump and yes. and so sort of, april and yeah, kind of, yeah, but april. the thing is is a lot of the other states didn't actually experience their bumps so no, they, they all started getting it so right. when you look at some of these national yeah. uh, uh histograms and things you should uh, it's actually not histogram. It's just a time series. But yeah. when you look at it, you should really view it as sort of multiple, you know, humps superimposed yeah. over one another. So what you're seeing huh. in the, when it's all aggregated together, yeah. it makes it look like we're failing miserably. But what's really happening is, is that, that we, some places are doing okay, but right. other places are now it's kind of up and down. They're going places, right into right? their yeah. full stride of sort of right. the horror, the horror period. You know, the but really, isn't that partly because they were further west and south? Yes, and yeah. I, centers? I mean, it was sort yeah, of a natural progression in some Exactly, yeah. yeah. So they're having their bad days yeah. now. Although and, California is interesting because they were a coastal, you know, state well, and they were doing okay. These are, but these then, are great cautionary yeah. tales for why yeah. you, sh you have to be very careful about yeah. how you reopen. And, exactly. And, and I, I actually uh, think... Right. Reopening in guarded ways is exactly what we ought to be doing. I'm really looking forward yeah. to watch some baseball games, for example. But uh -huh. uh, but the thing is, is that you know you don't just open it up and say everybody go hang out at the bar, and and you also have to take into account human nature, which is yeah. that even if you you put all the best advice out there, yeah. there are some people who are just going to be idiots, and you have to factor that in. We really, I mean, we lived in a bubble before, but we really live in a bubble now because if you go out of this area and you hear and I had my car uh, detailed the first time in five years at Iris Subaru. And people 
in the, in the dealership were wearing masks, but not everywhere else. And you, by the way, you can't even cross the street in Danvers because there's no such thing as a pedestrian. <laughs> but, yeah, um, you just, there's a lot of parts of the country. People were complaining about that. I mean, so I think the further you get away from places where you just sort of do it because it's the right thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's true. It's dangerous, true. yeah. We should probably mention a little bit, you know, the, the city council may be in summer recess right now, but the but thing they're is, still is busy. they're having committee meetings yeah. and rather than just waiting until their midsummer meeting, which uh -huh. is in July, they actually did schedule in one special meeting, special very, meeting. but it's just very to specific. Be on COVID. COVID yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, so That's things on are July happening. July 15th. Right. Two yeah. It's probably worth mentioning just a few things of, okay. of note that happened uh, at the, the last meeting. The last meeting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was actually not that exciting, but you know, there was a couple of big things that may still come. I I, I think there was kind of the the leftover wind from previous meetings having yeah. to do with matters of race and right. some of the friction that's happening between some yeah. City there's councils. a little bit of a kumbaya right. stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you look at it though, even even the 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 lot of the um, conflict is is sort of calming down a little bit even nationally yeah. it's not stopping and it shouldn't stop but yeah the thing is, is that it's not the, you know like i'm not waking up every morning going well who did, which top statue did they topple today i don't and, know it keeps uh, you happening know. No. but the, you know but they they have shut down the seattle um you know what do they call that chaz after it turned right into but a then remake of somebody Lord was of the flies well two people were killed uh, yeah, there were multiple homicides. And then there and, was and something that happened on route, and then they were blocking, uh, it's not Route 5, whatever, Highway 5, something. That's right. So, somebody so it was, was people car, were blocking yeah. the interstate, and in fact... Uh, yeah, car, somebody was killed there. Somebody was killed there, you know. So the thing is, is that the, the idealism is all well and good, but yeah. the thing, there are some pretty practical things people have to consider. And I think it'll be interesting to see what the long-term after effect in a place like Seattle is in terms mm -hmm. of whether people are okay with the, how the mayor handled it. I'm not sure they're going to be so okay with that. Um, and, um, but, you know, there was, you know, they, they had their day, you know, and now party's over. You kind of, let's do constructive things now. Well, Don't, there's, there's work to be done. In there's a lot work of to be done yeah. and you know, be productive and thoughtful. You know, I mean, I do have sort of general concerns about the the sort of the, the atmosphere of, of um, where alternate opinions are just not to be heard, you know. Because it, it, it's chilly. I know. And it's, I, can, I see it even locally here on like some very of the much. listservs, you know. Oh, um, oh my goodness. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I'll just mention, uh, yeah. you know, not that, not, I don't want to put too many people on the spot here, but yeah. the Cambridgeport listserv. I know, I, you know, know, I get that. No, and I, again, won't, I, not, won't, I, don't, I don't even know how to post on that, but I don't want to. I'm not going <laughs> to, I don't want to call individuals out or anything like that, no. but you know, all it takes was one person or maybe yeah. two people mildly to basically have a nuanced, slightly different point of view on a particular well, matter. Well, a little more than race. nuanced, but I won't even go there. Right. But the, the point is, is that, you know, as somebody did point out, you know, 40% of this country, crazy as it sounds, have, have voted oh, for yeah. Trump. So yeah, and they're still kind of behind him, at least yeah. 37. Yeah. So you can't just sort of wish it away. And I think, yeah. you know, if you really believe in a kind of a pluralistic society, if you believe yeah. in free speech, yeah. You know, the thing is, is that you, you sort of owe it to yourself to just let people say what they got to say. And if it's you can ignore you want, it or not get it, say, I don't know. Okay. I yeah, get a I'm daily sorry. digest. I don't. I don't get right. separate things. You'd but, be crazy but, you know, to get separate emails. I mean, yeah, but people, people in in the Cambridge but list server just they're basically quietly trying to figure out ways to shut somebody out now too. And I thought, well, that's well. I think from one of my reading of it, it's sort of the old board members versus the new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like but, what Saul Tannenbaum said. I think he yeah. Said it the best. But it, yeah. But I think the main point here is simply that we are kind of in a time now where. If you want to, you know, maybe yeah. there's reasons for it, but mm -hmm. you know, if you want to express a point of view that is is something other than the party line, yeah, you, other than the progressive much, Green New Deal, all that. Oh yeah, stuff. yeah. you can pretty yeah. much count on getting a right. dog pile on you. I know, you know? That, I don't. That's I keep my that's, mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, it's it's happening in academic institutions as well, where uh -huh. where alternate points of view are being squelched. And I think well, that's, that's been going on for a while. It's been building way. up. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's just sort of reached, it's really reached sort of yeah. a crisis point right now for some, you know, 
I'm mean, pretty good people, you know, but they just happen to be kind of skeptical yeah. about things and they want to offer a, a yeah. different way of looking at it. And they say, no, you can't even look at it in a different way. It's, yeah. You got to preach the party line, you know? So, I mean, I've heard no. it kind of likened to kind of religious fundamentalism now, but it's, you know. Well, sort in of a different. way, I mean, you know, you have extremes and I always have felt you need the extremes to define what is in the middle in a way i mean i, I know but let's find that middle of my well, goodness let's find that middle well yeah. I, I think the middle is out there i think oh, I, I don't th have a voice but I, in um, my view yeah. you know yeah. and i've heard i've heard it said and i've seen really really well yeah. thought out articles written not lately because you know we're in kind of yeah. a frenzy right now but yeah it, yeah, most people in this country are kind of the forgotten middle, and yeah, you know, and as as what about Kansas? You know that book? I uh, forget somebody Frank wrote it. Something Dorothy Frank Baum? No, 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 not that. Book. <laughs> anyway, it, yeah. it was uh, really good because it was about exactly that. Uh, yeah, we're ignoring like yeah, whole, yeah. and I, I think you'll probably start to see that express itself even more in the days to come. Is it sort mm -hmm. of the you know, I actually, I, my own personal intuitive feeling is that yeah. that sort of forgotten middle, even if there were people who were sort of predisposed toward Trump or moving away from him pretty clearly right now. Well, they better and, be registered to vote and they better vote because well, they people, tend to be. I know, but I'm just concerned that um, we're going to have a similar, you know, if people had voted that loved Bernie and all that. Four years ago, we wouldn't have Trump. Let's just, I'm going to put it I out know. there. You know, it's no, just, I, I know where you're coming from on you that. Know, one. So I, it's just, please, yeah. you know, I, and right, I know people it, say, I mean, I'm not, good, good, you know, wonderful about Biden, but at least he, he has a heart. Yes. He knows what, you know, uh, one of the best things I've seen about Biden was on Colbert had um, John Stewart on, and I have a clip of it all uh, where he talks about, and he's a real Bernie person. It was John Stewart. Uh, but he said, because he knows grief and loss, that's what you need now. You need someone that you, understands. That's the best way I to just, it was develop one of the empathy. Best exactly. Yeah. You, you have you, a man in office who. Yeah, the best source of empathy is to, learn, is to learn it the hard way. Right. And he's yeah, been and through I, enough. He has learned and, it the hard way. No, as I'm, Stephen Colbert, you know that he lost his father and two brothers in a car accident when he was like nine or 10. So yeah. he understands so, loss. So it was an incredible. If nothing else, no, I think that's we can why use, you should vote for him. <laughs> honestly, it's the one, it's the one thing we need more than anything now you is just so, right. empathy. Well, yeah. em empathy and tolerance, and that means tolerance yeah. across the board. Meaning, you know, if you're a right winger, I, I want to hear you out. If you're right. if you're a left winger, I want to hear you out. Right, you know, but not, not, not to call names and not you. to put people down and be unkind. I know this I person. Know. We have is unkind. He's mean and unkind and dark, and all these speeches he's given recently have yeah. been these just like his inauguration speech. I know, but but the thing you is, it's, a, it's sort of becoming a kind of a temporary bad American tradition. So I'm afraid got, of what's. I mean, I got, got I want people on the right the better, who are being I know, dreadful. But there's people with guns on the out. left being dreadful. I mean, honestly, the no, people who are in no. Chaz were, you I, know, killing know. people and you know it's well, like even if i don't know if you can say that completely i think there were some incidents but i'm just saying right but I'm the thing is, is that, of, you yeah. know i'm 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 concerned about sort of the extreme so i you know and yeah, i just me, let's I bring us all back and i feel some confidence now and i haven't i don't usually feel it this way politically you that do? the you the american confident? middle basically just wants things to be changed and that includes the president yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and that includes some Republicans, you know, that they, yeah. said, they, they said, you know, listen, we may, yeah. we may agree with some of the initiatives yeah. and whatever, but this guy, this is yeah. not the right guy. And, and yeah. we got to do something about it. And yeah. I just hope that kind of works itself out, you know, by right. the way, getting back to the local, yeah. uh, just mentioned yeah. that, you know, one of the, uh, one of the items that actually it drew, brought a lot of people out in public comment at the, uh, what was it? The June, uh, June 20th, 29th, 29th. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was actually, uh, I mean, you know, somewhat spurred by the COVID-19 crisis because yeah. of housing instability, you know, insecurity. Yeah. Um, it's become kind of a prime time to introduce things for tenant protection, but there is this bill that's been floating at the state. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. That would basically give like enabling legislation to, for any, any city and town across Massachusetts to enact, pretty much roll your own uh, tenant protections up to and including rent control laws. Hmm. 
Uh, and I don't know that that really has the legs to make it through the legislative well, where, process. Did it, didn't it come out of committee or something? Oh, it came out of a committee with a positive uh, Yeah, and now where is it? Um, where is it now? I, you know, it's referred to, and it's, I think it's one of those things where uh, it could potentially be passed in the summer session by the end of July, mm. uh, but then it would have to go to the gov for governor's signature, but I don't think it would get not, it, at least right. not the way it's written. Yeah. Um, there's something a little too arbitrary about it. You know, you know mm. basically, if you say, okay, every city in town, you can do whatever the hell you want, mm. right? Uh, up to, you know, maybe up to within the confines of what the Constitution says yeah. you can't do. Yeah. Um, it could get real, it could become like the one and only issue in Cambridge again. And uh, I think affordable housing and all that will be more, or just the whole, for, you haven't mentioned your favorite topic, the affordable housing overlay. That's right. tomorrow night they're having an order. Right. So they're, yeah. Right. And I think that the, the yeah. six counselors, they just, they don't, I don't think they really are interested in a whole lot of debate about it. I think their intention is pretty much to kind of whip mm. it through. Well, I think they quickly. have the votes this time. I think they have the votes and, and yeah. they're going to do it. And uh, I think it's a mistake. But the thing is, is that no, uh, we disagree. I think they're going to, they're going to just I, push it through. Yeah. You know, we don't agree the thing is, that is that yet. honestly, in terms of popular appeal, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like saying like, we're going to freeze your rent to sort of get popular appeal, much more so than let's allow the construction of certain uh, subsidized housing units. You know, even during the rent control days, there was not a whole lot of push to build subsidized housing that was always, was always about yeah. rent control. So what you will see if that were to prevail, you'll probably see a, a kind of a revision of the politics. I, but, but you have brought this up. I mean, just cap a rent increase. I mean, that's I, see, the most see logical the, thing. You know, listen, if you I know? could sort of grab some state legislatures yeah. uh, and had the time to really do it, I would say, look, if you mm -hmm. want to do some some control so that yeah. rents are not escalating out of control. It shouldn't be 10%. It shouldn't even be, you know, it should be do, cost do of a, living raise or whatever. No, it should know? be allow a little bit beyond cost of living, but really? the, thing is, the exorbitant, like yeah. we're going to, how do we throw everybody out of the house type of rent increases that have been yeah, a that, problem. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be some rental revisions that are going to be happening as a result of the disruption caused by the virus too. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, both That's commercial true. rents as well as residents. Oh yeah, rents are a little, uh, I know, you know, a little lower. Because I think I, I heard available. it said that yeah. if you wanted to buy a house in Villarica, let's say oh. it's a seller's market now because there's a lot of people wanting to. Oh, they want space and open. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So that's that's kind of happening. It's I don't know what that really translates into in terms of urban, the, you know, the desire to pack. Well, I hope we don't go back to oh, the car is now king now because we have to commute and oil prices are so low. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't want to. I have a car, but I'm careful and I don't drive a lot, but. Um, you wonder about that. People, you know, it's a return to the suburbs. It could, you Cheaper, could actually see. And, I, and I'm working from home anyway. I don't have to. I mean, I don't know. This, you can, I think you could probably see a little bit of that. Actually, you and I yeah. both went to this uh, uh, right. conference on driverless vehicles. If oh, that, that was a long comes, time ago. I hope that never comes. Oh, come you, on. But if that something was a like nightmare. that. <laughs> but if that were to happen, if you remember, everybody at that um, conference said if that happened, then there would be, you know, the incentive to live close to the city would actually be diminished because exactly. you just call up your car, it would come and pick you up like Except a taxi. Except that car still work. has to drive the streets and it has to go park somewhere at night. Well, or else or pick up the, the next person. And, and, oh, God, and do the please. Same. I don't want yeah. to see autonomous but, vehicles. I don't. Anyway, I think that the planners need to sort of start yeah. thinking about this a little yeah. bit here. But I think also just in yeah. terms of people who are concerned about housing costs and whatever, yeah. you know, people need to take a quick step back and think yeah. about how this is all going to shake out, yeah. um, you know, in the short term and in, as well as in the long What's term. What's our time? We have um, yeah, just a, a few minutes. minutes coming on here. Yeah, yeah, we have a little extra time. I don't know if folks are going to realize it because... Uh, if yeah, we we're, went on we're, about ten minutes we a, earlier. We may have a forty-five minute show tonight. We have the we have the bonus uh, uh, right this week here. Right. By the way, the universities now, and I'm sure oh. the public schools as well, are having the yeah. you know the time is you know it may be early July, but the thing is, is that yeah. it's no time like the present to sort of you know solidify your plans for. Well, Harvard apparently schools. has, and some people don't like it. Or something. That's right. So yeah. the thing is, they're doing things where they're going yeah. to invite just the freshmen. Yeah, uh, back uh, and yeah. uh, you know, and they're going to sort of scatter them around so yeah. that there's minimal social distancing. Yeah. By the way, in terms of, I mean, I think it's a real concern about you bringing people in from all around the country. Absolutely. Then you could actually introduce 
you know, virus threats again. Yeah, but they're going to be have testing. Oh, they're going to be testing yeah. every three yeah. days or something. So and, and a, a, way, a yeah. way to quarantine. Yeah, but I they, think that's a situation where you really are going to need to do things like that to be yeah. sure. We're kind of in this nice, comfortable, steady state right now, but that ain't going to yeah. last. So well, that's more for our universities, but I think our local schools. Um, hopefully, I have, I, yeah, so. and I don't know exactly what the current thinking yeah. is. Yeah, well, we'll find out. On you know. a lot of parents need, you know. You know, school is actually a defect, a, a de facto daycare option for a lot of parents. Yeah, but but teachers, parents. if they live in communities where the schools are not operating, but they have to teach in a school that is, I mean, it's it's a nightmare for, I think, the adults. Not yes. so much of the yeah. illness itself, but the, just the logistics. Oh, they, I think there's a lot of pressure coming from a lot of the adults yes. who basically kind of need exactly. to have the kids go to school. And right, um, no, and, no. So true. anyway, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they kind of yeah. sort that out and and right. find some sort of uh, reasonable happy medium yeah. if there is a happy medium. Right. Right. Um, last thing, maybe just quick thing to mention yeah. here before we call it a day. There was one other thing I found interesting. I don't know how many other people found it interesting at the last city council meeting, which was uh -huh. Councilor Toomey put in an order, basically raising issues and seeking information about, you know, the, the short and long-term uh, future of, of um, retail in Cambridge, basically. Oh. Uh, there are retail areas where oh, yeah. the, the landlords will basically say, this ain't working for me. The businesses yeah. can't operate. They can't do this. So I either have to right. dramatically cut rents or convert retail, uh, you know, frontages and turn them into residential properties. Yeah. That's actually happened on my block. You know, there are things that right. are becoming yeah. residential now. So, Interesting. so those are the sorts of things that people are going to have to start thinking about. It, oh, know? there's places that are closing and yeah, people, everything. Pro everything. Property owners are going to have to make some hard decisions. And a lot of changes, Robert. Yeah, and people are going to have to really give some thought about about all of this stuff here. So all right. So anyway, um, but the, the Red Sox will be playing at come the end of the month, and I hope everybody's oh. well. I think there are four who have tested positive. Yeah. But, um, but you know, I'm nonetheless. I really, really could just use a little bit of baseball, quite honestly. Okay, that's good. All right. All right. So uh, we should so probably we'll call it a day. see you uh, in two weeks, I guess, right? Uh, unless we come Maybe. up with something else. Yeah, we we'll, keep saying that, but anyway. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we'll see you all again soon on Cambridge Inside. Stay healthy. Bye.